Greetings and welcome back to New Tide Mouth. My name is Tobel. It is year uh, 15. It is the spring of year 15. We've got a couple of problems facing our small little village and colony. We have a shortage or a soon to be shortage of clothing and we have a shortage of logs. So I did just add a couple more jobs from the labor pool over to the Forester Lodge and I've set a bunch of people to uh, the goal of cutting down some trees, although that'll be a little bit slow again because we literally just pulled from the laborer tree, so there's not a lot of people not doing much. Uh, the other problem that I mentioned, if we look at the stored clothes, by the way, can I see stored clothes in as a graph at all? Probably not. Maybe we do. Clothing. Hey, sure enough. So you can see here very slowly over time, we've been coming down off of our maximum. So while it does look like it might be stabilizing here, we are going to continually be in, uh, increasing our population. So I think... Now, is the tailor, is it because it's one It's one building, right? It is just one building. And it doesn't have enough raw materials to work with. Could we possibly... Let's check a couple things. First off, did we ever finish these two buildings? That's weird, I couldn't quite click on it. So, we do have domesticated animals. On both of these. Okay, so both of these are ready to go. We just haven't had a builder come this way in a while. Uh, what I was talking about for this, this is going to be a wool pen. And I had mentioned this, uh, we'd put this down a while ago so we could possibly change our tailor from hide to wool coat. And that way we've got a very sturdy, or sorry, very steady supply of raw materials. Let's go ahead and give this bad boy, or these bad boys, a upgrade in priority here. So that hopefully these buildings are finished sooner rather than later. If we get that done, then we can probably force our tailor over to wool and be in a, a lot better shape. And honestly, I was thinking about upgrading to, uh, oh, what is this, the clothier, the tailoring company? I don't think we're going to need to do that, mostly because the tailor should be able to make, I mean, look how much clothing the tailor was making on their own. They were making plenty of clothing when they had the raw materials for it. So we'll just have to wait and be a little bit patient for those to come up, but that should fix our problem with clothing. Okay, so I'm dusting the, the um, we're blowing the dust off a bit. It has been a little while since we, we touched banish. So where were we at in terms of the forge? Now we just put down the forge. We're waiting on the metal smith. We are made, uh, waiting on building supplies. I believe our plan was to change what we use for building supplies as soon as possible. So we're still stuck with a brick, a joist, and 20 logs right now. I believe we were trying to make joists, right? Yeah. Were we out of what? We have plenty of iron. I think we were out of coal. But I think we've got plenty of joists going out here. Do I see joists in the list at all? Or are they just kind of hanging around? Where does a joist go? Maybe it just immediately gets brought over to the building supplier. Our brickery is out of clay. So we do have a shortage of clay, and it's kind of unfortunate because that's where we really need things to be producing right now is the brickworks. Maybe we shouldn't have built this over here. Maybe the brickworks should be closer to the clay pits. But I wonder if, if maybe the distance that the clay pits are having to go, the shore house rather, we do have two, oh, one of them's getting sand, that's right, because didn't we put in a glassworks here relatively recently? I think it's right behind my menu. Yeah, so we are making glass, and they do have plenty of sand. So at least the, uh, the sand part of the shore house is working. Now this shore house is making clay, but I think the pottery, we do have a potter here. And they're making use of the clay as well. So I think we just have a shortage on clay. Maybe I should. This would hurt our food for just a minute, but we, we do have a lot of food production. How about we do a couple things here? Let's kill this little uh, arrival town arrival thing. Let's also move uh, remove roads here. Let's remove this road. I'm going to trash the fishing dock. I'm going to bump it over probably right next to the existing trading post, or I'm going to put it right up against the potter. And then I'm going to see if I can fit a couple of shore houses right next to each other to help gather more clay. We're not exactly overflowing with uh, workers right now, but that could be something we work towards. We don't have anyone working at any of these mines. They're all basically turned off. I honestly can turn them off just so I know and I can keep track of that. We do have people working at the coal mine because a lot of our buildings are currently using coal as fuel. So let's wait for those to be destroyed. Really what the bottleneck is, is these darn building supplies. That's what's really killing us. Now, we did have more glass, right? So we could try to do 
I don't know, how many joists do we make every time we make one? And where do they go? Do Should I have a general supply thing here? Or are they going into a barn? No, they're not going there. Maybe the joists actually go to one of these big stockpiles instead. I'm trying to, maybe we should try to track one as it leaves. I don't know where it actually sits at. Does someone just run around with the joists in their inventory? Just hanging out? And the reason I ask that is because if, if we do have a ton stored up, we can find out maybe if it's a problem with uh, the delivery or if it's a problem like right now, it's just waiting for production. And it seems like right now we're, mi we're just missing a lot of coal, uh, which is a little bit bizarre. I don't think a lot of other people are using coal, right? You're, you're still using furnace fuel. The city blacksmith is using... St they're making steel tools. And remember, that was a big thing, too. We moved the city blacksmith from iron tools to steel tools. So they're using coal as well. So we've got two buildings using coal right now, although I thought we'd kept up with that with how many people we assigned to the coal mine. We have a trader, but we've not really had a whole bunch of stuff here. Buff coat, full suit. Interesting. Again, not a whole lot we can do here. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the trader. Poor standard pastures that are empty for eternity. What's going on with these buildings? Surely we've had a worker come free, right? Do I have them in the wrong spot? They don't need anything removed. They have the domesticated animals there. It's just waiting on building them. So where are the builders at? Is the question. And I, these should be the highest priority as well because I don't think I have builders on anything else. Can I actually see my builders right now? Are you working on... Oh, the cemetery. Yeah, that's actually a pretty big work project. I'd forgotten all about the cemetery. I think I saw the walls and I just assumed it was ready to go. Because we saw the fencing around it. But alas, that is not the case. Although, in theory, the priority level should have gone up for the uh, pens. Either way, that'll finish eventually. I'll speed things up just a bit. Where are we at with our... A removal of this. This is going to take a while. We're just really short on workers. I could try to trim things away. Our church is filling up nicely. What about students? Do we have too many students at all? Nope, we're not quite maxed out on students yet. We're still trying to get stuff removed from the barn. We really just are short of a lot of labor is, like, is kind of some of our problem. Let's pull back one from the central market. We can probably free them up without hurting things too bad. Oh, these joists are killing us. What else can we try to grab for these building supplies? We could use glass. We have a ton of glass lying around right now. By a ton, I mean apparently nine. Where'd the rest of the glass go? There's eight here. There's six here. I thought we were pumping out a lot more glass. There's a bunch right there lying out. Does anyone use glass in any of their productions? I didn't think so. You're making furniture and pottery. Oh, we could do bricks and logs, glass, lumber, and iron. That'd be a pretty basic one. That's just glass, lumber, and iron. We have tons of lumber, I believe. And iron, though, yeah, we still have a ton of iron. Let's try to swap over to this. Maybe this will give us more building supplies faster so we don't have too much of a bottleneck anymore. We really need to pump it out to finish the metalsmith. The metalsmith can help us with uh, certain refinements. And we can start trying to build this inner wall of colonial half houses. That's what's really holding us up. I want to keep pumping these out because we really need to make sure our population supports itself. So as people die off, we have a children to replace them, etc, etc, ad nauseum. I'm going to speed the game up and we'll be back here in a bit after a little bit of time has passed. That way you don't have to sit and wait for everything and we'll just kind of skip ahead to some more adventurous parts. Alright, so we've got our two wool pens finished. I had to assign two workers to that. I also went ahead and destroyed the fishing, uh, the fishing hut here. So... We do have a couple more laborers, and actually a bunch of people just became laborers at the same time. So a bunch of our students graduated, thankfully. So we have a massive pool of laborers all of a sudden, so they're going to help us tear down a lot of the materials I set to get removed. Uh, we also are kind of burning through building supplies, finally. That seems to be the right, the good mix here. Glass, lumber, and iron. We have a ton of lumber. Our iron is not exactly the uh, where it, was, where it once was, but overall, we're doing pretty well. We might have to up 
the rate at which we're gathering. We also could look at putting down another iron mine as well. Can we upgrade this to something different? Uh, deep iron, coal, iron and coal mine. Upgrade a significantly more resource production allows ground to be reclaimed, and it's but it needs 70, it looks like, uh, candles. Uh, so I don't think we have the ability to make those yet, or I just don't know how to do it. That's either or. We did put a building supply in the metalsmith, so that's going to be coming out soon. Meanwhile, the glassworks has tons of materials, so they should be doing fine for a while. Let's go back over to this particular spot. Remember, I wanted to try to help out with the clay situation. What's, what was our clay hold up? Oh, that's right. We were trying to work on brickworks. We're going to need bricks for stuff anyways down the road, so let's go ahead and continue with this idea of uh, supporting with a shore house a little bit of our clay issues that we've been having. So this just has to be built on the shore, right? Okay, so a shore house right here, and I think we can still fit in our fishing hut. Oh, we've got plenty of space for the fishing hut. We could actually squeeze two shore houses in. So let's put the fishing dock here, and we'll stick down another shore house, because I'm sure other things are going to need clay either way. Right? So... Oh, shoot. I'm, d I'm so silly. I forgot all about the fact that it doesn't actually give you the building outline. All right, so that's about as much as we're going to fit in there. We'd already... I, I think I put down the shore house, and I looked over, and I'm like, oh, here's the shore house right here. No, that's the trading post, you big dummy. Okay. By the way, alternatively, we're not at all super screwed. I can just make a bridge come across here, I believe. Do we need a... Um, a uh, drawbridge? A covered bridge? I think... Oh, this is kind of cool. We actually can make a drawbridge. Yeah, for fun, we'll make that, because it'll look really nice. We'll make a drawbridge, and then we'll put another shore house on the other side of this bridge. That way people can, you know, get shore, get clay and things over here, and we'll be fine. Uh, you have silver and copperware to trade. I'd love to get some copperware, I think, to get those fancy... Can't you make fancy homewares? Pewterware and silverware? Now, the part of the whole reason that we're trying to build the metalsmith is to eventually make tin into refined tin or tin ore into tin and then we can start making the requirements for the fancier types of homeware so pewterware or silverware fancy furniture is that under here fancy furniture is hardwood hardwood is uh actually we can actually probably just start making lumber right now out of hardwood so wait oh hang on this is making lumber out of logs or hardwood okay let's not do that where do we pick hardwood at Aha. Uh -huh. Do we have to have some kind of special building for it? Hardwood Forester. Hardwood Forester. Completely different than the normal Forester. Okay. Then I guess we'll put down a Hardwood Forester over here. I mean, it can go just go right next to where we're at right now. That way, as we're cutting down uh, some trees, we're going to be adding more saplings for the hardwood. That should help us out with that production level. We're at our cap here. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the number of workers in the Forester Lodge. A bunch of people are croaking, so luckily we have a lot of people to replace them. But do remember that we're going to have to drop four people into the fishing dock as soon as it gets done. Temporarily, let's go ahead and put a bunch of people into the builder's profession to get this going. Both the fishing dock, the shore house, the bridge, everything else that's going on right now. Are we doing okay on food? We're still doing pretty good on food. I wouldn't mind raising that limit up to 5k, and you know what? I think I will. Because we're starting to get a little bit bigger. And I want to have more of a heads up in case we start losing our food production. Right? If it starts going down, I want to know ahead of time. I want to look over and go, oh wait, we're at 7,000 now. I, that way I've got a lot of time to respond to it. Uh, we did finish another colonial half house, which is great. This one actually is finished as well and just needs builders. What about these two down here? These two are also good to go. Nice. So it looks like we're really cranking out those building supplies and homewares. Where do homewares go to rest? <laughs> when you're not needing them. I don't actually see them anywhere. I guess we're, we're like one for one at this point. Are we building just enough to make everyone happy? We did get some tin and some silver at some point. We have uh, nine students right now. We want to get a couple more babies on the way. So hopefully with these families moving in, we just got, say, for example, Shad in Glinzy. 
uh, which is like glamping and glamming. So they are moved in together at this colonial half house. Boom, this colonial half house is about to get finished as well. Let's see who moves in here for funsies. I'm still bummed you can't rename people. That was a lot of fun. Even early games like Sim Tower, you could rename. I remember that in Sim Tower. Uh, in Sim, so Sim Tower, if you never saw it, it was a really fun game about tower management. You're able to build a skyscraper, and I loved it. Of course, as part of the uh, you know the old Sim whatever you happen to have Sim Farm, Sim Ant, Sim Colony, Sim everything. Um, Sim Tower was a lot of fun, but you could always re you could name one of your people and follow them around throughout their day. And they had like a little silhouette as they waited for the elevator. Oh man, Sim Tower! I spent so many hours on that game, mostly waiting for things to happen, because I had such a crappy computer at the time. Let's bump up the amount of people working in the coal mine. It's good for their health, no big deal. Let's um, eh, maybe we don't want to put anyone in the precious uh, ore mine yet. We'll uh, we'll stand by on that for a moment. Things are looking up, I think, in New Tynemouth. We want to... Oh, did we get any wool yet? Have we gotten wool from our new thing? We did. We have a ton of wool. Let's change our production for Taylor over to wool coats. And that should really bump up the amount of stored clothes we have. I'm really excited. This is starting to look really, really good. Let's put down... Now, remember, we, we have staggered a couple of colonial houses here and there because I want to add things like the barber, for example. Or um, I think they can be upgraded into those types of buildings. So let's go into the home... Colonial. What else do we have? Colonial homestead can be upgraded to a bed and breakfast. The colonial house can be upgraded into a barber surgeon. So let's just do the colonial homestead here. This should still fit the motif, right? Yeah. I do like that it kind of breaks up the silhouette a bit. You know, it, it's got a bit of a higher house on it, a higher roof. We'll add a couple of more half houses here. Oops. Half house, half house. Now, what's going to fit the corner? Because this is going to have to be our corner. I think before the corner house we have a bit of an alley on either side. That way we're, we're able to, to, you know, have some room. In fact, maybe that wouldn't be a bad spot on any of our corners to drop down a well, which is a deep, deep subject. Uh, let's try to do services, right? Bingo. Okay, so we'll do one without any fancy stuff to it, and we'll just put it at, um, yeah, we'll just put it at the side of the, um, at one of the houses, and then that kind of feels like a bit of an alleyway. And we could do, like, a gravel road here or something like that. We could do it on both sides. Although I think as, as long as you've got that corner open, the colonial corner house should work. This requires homeware. So we're actually going to be able to get this entire section done with the exception of this colonial homestead, which does need fancy homewares. Again, what does this need again? Fancy homewares needs uh, fancy furniture plus pewterware or silverware. Uh, we're still waiting on... Oh, no, our metalsmith got done. Pewterware. Ten pewter. How to make the pewters. Uh, can I go over to my forge to look at the pewter? Tin ore, copper ore, furnace fuel. Okay, let's change things up a bit. Tin ore plus copper ore. We can do this. Let's open up the tin ore shaft. Let's open up the copper ore shaft and add one uh, to each. We'll actually do two at the tin ore, one at the copper ore. Because it's going to be, what was it, more tin than copper? Okay, so we're going to start spitting out pewter. The pewter is then going to get refined into pewterware. Ten pewter, two furnace fuel. Boy, this furnace fuel product, uh, producer is really on it. They are going to be the ones who are kind of getting swamped. Do we have, a, like, a surplus of coal at all? Ah, uh, not really. Can we start making... We need, to make, we need to make a better fuel. Isn't coke or charcoal a better source of fuel? If I remember from my days of playing any kind of a, a metal smith or something like that. We're still making steel tools. What about... Industrial fuel production. This lets us... A fuel refinery takes burnable natural resources and converts them into a hotter, more desirable form of industrial hotter burning. Okay, so maybe we need to put a fuel refinery down here. Let's do that. Let's do a fuel refinery instead of just having... Wait. Just kidding. This is totally a fuel refinery. Um, furnace fuel made out of all these different things. So, erg, what do we need? Fire charcoal? How do I make charcoal? Hmm. I might even have to check the wiki on some of these. Like, some of the... Some of the, what would you call it, like the 
the paths here, the connecting materials, I'm just really not familiar with yet. I would think charcoal would be something you burn at, like I think charcoal would be burned at a fuel refiner. Like you make charcoal as its own object, then you refine it, or you, you use charcoal in your, you know, production of your furnace fuel. Can't do anything with the metalsmith. Obviously, the brickworks is just... W oh, wow, it's right there at the brickworks. Okay, so charcoal. <laughs> we can make charcoal by getting charcoal uh, five logs. So that's what we'll do. We'll set the brickworks on uh, for charcoal production for a bit. We'll change the furnace fuel over to charcoal. And... Oh, can we make him do coal? What was the other option? Charcoal or coke fuel? Okay, coke actually, I think... Yeah, coke uses... It's more of like a condensed form of coal, right? Is it cleaner? I can't quite remember. But we need to use logs because really our coal is being used up in its own right in certain things. So coal is going to our steel production. We're no longer using coal for anything else though. So hopefully we can build up a supply of coal. There's a little, there's like 12 here. There's actually a lot of furnace fuel. I'm a little surprised at that. Holy crap, you've got a ton of furnace fuel already. Oh, maybe we're not in that, that bad of a shape then. Maybe I can just stick with um, making bricks here. And this guy can just keep on keeping on as he is. No, fair enough. I mean, if we've got the firewood, I guess I don't have to worry about it. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm jumping the gun on what we're changing things up. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay. So you need pewterware. Got it. You are making pewterware, but you still need your, uh, your tin, your copper, and your furnace fuel. Fair enough. Let's also go ahead and stretch a road out here. So our, uh, our fancy folks can get to work faster. We'll also extend this road down since we haven't done that yet. We have a road here, correct? We do. Let's extend this road as well since we've got a lot of people uh, to spare, right? Do we still have people to spare? Not quite as many. Ooh, a lot of people must have died just recently. A couple. So you're, now we're starting to really get into that time period where our original settlers and, and the, then the seniors in the city are starting to die off. It really becomes dangerous when you just run out of replacements. Now, keep in mind that we're going to have to dump four people, or at least three people, over into the fishing dock. We, our crop field is nowhere near getting harvested yet. Hey, that's nice to see. I forgot all about this side, the uh, colonial houses here. Yeah, this is starting to come together now. We're really getting a nice-looking inner row of housing. Do we have building supplies here and homewares? Why can't you build the homewares? You should have been building tons of homewares, though. Where do they go? There's where the joists go. We were trying to look for those joists earlier. Homewares. Surely we've built more homewares by now. Or maybe they all went to these three houses. If I were homewares, I would hide in a random furniture... Look at that. The joists are down here in the small barn. Maybe small barns on the outside of town aren't the greatest idea. <laughs> how did... Okay. How does furniture end up over here? How does glass end up over here? Shoot. Maybe these small barns aren't a great idea. But then, do people still go out and get the resources? I mean, I guess I, guess I could just really rely on the central market to go out and get everything. But I really think the people who work at a building will try to drop something off. So they need a, a closer drop-off point than all the way at the central market. Hmm. One mystery after another. We'll get them figured out down the road. I'm still excited, though, just to see how many of these um, houses are getting finished up. How is our fancy... Do we finish this one up? Hardwood forest or not quite? Let's put a couple people into the building job. The building profession. We've got lots of families moving in together. This is awkward. Okay, fair enough. You just had the child. So do we have no more couples? Are we at the point where we have to start relocating the outer housing to the inner housing? At least it's kind of a smooth transition, and these aren't all getting built at the exact same time, so we don't have a massive surge of babies, and we get overwhelmed with um, with mouths to feed. 85 members of the chapel, we have 10 students at the house, zero patients, sorry, at the schoolhouse, uh, zero patients at the hospital. Uh, our stored clothing is going back up. We've got... Anything short, really. Tons of uh, industrial fuel. Meh levels of clay. Uh, let's go ahead and put one more person at the shore house. It looks like they're about to be finished with the fishing dock as well. So once that goes up, we'll add a couple of people to that. We'll have to actually add a lot of them back 
uh, because we're really short, not really short, but we're starting to go down a bit on food. Remember, we were hovering around 4,600, although all three of these are going to get harvested at some point soon. Nomads are, have arrived. Hey, nomads, welcome. How many are there? Oh, there's a ton. That's exciting. Okay, someone mentioned this uh, is a good option, is to drop down a boarding house. This helps... Uh, let homeless people have a place to live. So especially people who are just joining your city, for example. We could put it over by the city hall, but I don't think that looks that great. Why don't we put it on this inner row, like right behind these houses? We'll put it over here against the back of the houses. That sounds good. We'll put a uh, boarding house down. It's going to take a while for that to be built. Now, I don't think we have the housing for all these new people, though. For the most part, well, unless people start croaking here, like left and right, we're still waiting on building supplies. But those are getting, uh, they are getting constructed. These, all these three new tunnel houses, sorry, these uh, colonial houses have people in them, so we don't have any spare homes yet. So putting down a boarding house is going to be a really good idea. How many uh, migrants are there? Nomads, eight of them. That'd be a really great boost to our population. You got to be really careful about that though, because if you get too many nomads at one time. They can cause some imbalance in your population, and all of a sudden you're like, why are is all my food gone? Why are all my supplies gone? And they also introduce sometimes not educated people to your populace as well. So keep those types of things in mind. Do they disappear after a while? I don't really want them to croak or anything. Let's see how fast we can get this boarding house up. You need clay. Man, you always need clay. I really should relocate the bricks works, brickworks, I think. We've got furnace fuel everywhere. So it would be convenient to have the brickworks over here, right? Maybe that's the better option. Oh, this is kind of cute, this little drawbridge here. Let's go ahead and add some people into the fishing dock. I forgot about that. Oh, we're kind of short on people now. Back to where we were. If only we had eight nomads to hire. <laughs> I really do want to wait till they have housing, just in case it, you know, I don't know. They're not going to die of uh, starvation, I don't think, but I just want to be safe. What if they're out all winter and they still don't have any homes? You know they're gonna they're gonna freeze to death, so we don't want that to happen. We are still ha we're starting to have some people crop up in our cemetery. We finally did finish that up. If you build it, the nomads will come. How many people does this house? Did it say it? It houses people. We don't know how many. <laughs> it houses a mystery amount of people. That's a cute little house. I love the styles in this. Oh, what is this? Town lodging. Improved boarding house. Oh, so a fancy boarding house. Lovely. You can also do like a set of New England homes. Kind of cute. That's more of like a, a little more, more mo like a little bit more uh, Civil War era, right? I'm not really big on. Um, post-Renaissance architecture, couldn't tell you one way from another. We are losing more people to death, so hopefully this boarding house is going to get finished up sooner than later. Let's actually put two people on, on uh, building so we can finish this up a little bit faster. And you know what? We're so close. Let's just go ahead and accept them under the default here. All right. Welcome, new citizens of a new Tynemouth. Get your asses to work. <laughs> we need people to work. All right. Great. So they're going to come right into the workforce. We're going to put two of them into the fishing profession right away so we can keep boosting our food up although we're about to get three separate harvests here so that shouldn't be too much of a big deal awesome do we have any uh, boats coming through I kinda wanna see the drawbridge in action it may not respond they don't always actually respond to the world around them alright just a little bit more construction on the boarding house where else are we we still haven't done much with what the, what's the deal here are we just crapping out on pottery 24 iron, so we're actually out of iron again. Erg. Do we want to put down... I guess we could. We could just drop down a iron mine right in our faces here. That might be the better option. I mean, I could have laborers go out and, you know, manually pick up iron from around the area. I mean, I guess there's a pretty decent supply. Just so that we can make use of that iron that's lying about, let's go ahead and give them an order to P 
peel some of it up. Iron here, a little bit of iron here, patch here, and maybe over here somewhere. Okay, that should be good enough. We'll we'll let the coal, the iron and coal mine build out eventually, but for the moment, we'll stick to coal production and we'll let our laborers bring up all the iron that's kind of lying oot in a boot. Uh, hey, our boarding house is finished. It was... Oh, it's got tons of space. Holy cow. That's awesome. Okay, so it's got lots of space in case we happen to get more and more migrants, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, push through that. People dying left and right. Stop dying. Yeah, all right. This sounds good. I'm pretty happy with where we are. We are moving right along in time mouth. Again, the um, the near goals is... Uh, the near near-term goals are to continue expanding our colonial inner wall here. Right, so we're gonna have housing all the way around this central city block. Once we finish that, by that time, really, we should have a much bigger workforce. So we're, we're talking about um, upgrading the outer buildings and continuing to expand our fancy industry. We do need to start looking at some kind of a option for tra trade goods. We need to start making something of value, whether that's more wool coats, you know, things like that. We, we just don't have a lot of output, so Miscellaneous items might be something. That's another option we could do is just start looking at what we've got in the central market that's just not going anywhere and talk about maybe selling some of those. But for the moment, though, it looks pretty straightforward and not a lot of these items are going to have a ton of value. Oh, does it raise up? Absolutely not. Awesome. <laughs> that's fine. Maybe it's only for bigger ships. Who knows? Uh, ooh, hull components. Does, I mean, do we need a ship right? What does that even give you? That's crazy. I've never even got into that part of the game. Do you start, like, just sending, like, massive um, uh, brigs and things out on the sea and the waters? Or maybe you need, like, a lake for that? Super curious about it. I still would love to see a map with one side of it as just nothing but water, like a coastal map. All right. I'm getting distracted. I appreciate you joining me for a little bit more of New Tine Mouth. Again, I'm not really sure. Oh, crap. Okay, well, hang on. This is going to... Uh, this episode is going to go on a little bit longer. An outbreak of that has occurred. I'm not even going to try it. Um, the hospital, having the hospital around, obviously, is super helpful because we can immediately start treating that. We have one person poisoned or diseased. Glindel is working. I really want you to go to the hospital, my friend. I don't know what that was. Uh, diphtheria? Okay, I'll tell you what. You guys, you guys keep an eye on things right here. I... I'm going to go to the all-powerful Google because I love learning about things that I didn't know that are uh, coming out in a game, right? That you're taught, you're told about in the game. Uh, a serious infection of the nose and throat that's easily prevent uh, preventable by a vaccine. Zero cases in 2015. Fascinating. Spreads easily. Sore throat, fever, swollen lymph, no lymph nodes, and weaknesses. That's so crazy. Okay, so we really don't want uh, this to linger, but it looks like the sick people are going to the doctor, which is, it's actually just one. I think these are designed to start out really small, but really punish you if you've not had the foresight to put down a hospital. But this person should be able to go into the hospital, get themselves treated. Uh oh, is it spreading? Are a bunch of them in church and they're just spreading the disease around? You filthy humans, you. I mean, or we can just keep them quarantined until they croak, right? That's an option, too. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? You didn't get better. Go back to the doctor. <laughs> Filthy child, go back to the doctor's office. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me for this episode of Banished. Uh, we'll come back to New Tine Mouth, maybe in year 17, give you a bit of a break, and come back to see what else has gone on. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time, take care.